front office was looking at it as, Drew Brees may not be our guy, we need to go out and get another guy. And because we had finished so poorly with our record, we were drafting, uh, we had the first pick in the draft. Over the last decade, many NFL fans have come to know Saints QB Drew Brees as one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever play in the NFL. And while over the last couple seasons, both Tom Brady and Drew Brees have been teeter-tottering back and forth over a variety of individual NFL records. With a rib injury in the middle of the 2020 season, which resulted in a slight drop in production, and Tom playing at an MVP caliber level at the age of 43, it seems as though the Buccaneers quarterback may end up passing the Saints QB in all individual statistics. That being said, Drew Brees' greatness is undeniable. Since entering the league in 2001, he boasts a resume in which any QB would die for. He's top 5 in most statistical categories for quarterbacks, he's a Super Bowl champion as well as a Super Bowl MVP. While Drew has spent the better half of his 20 year career in New Orleans, his career actually started off in San Diego. This may not come as a shock for many, but for some of the younger viewers who've only witnessed a quarterback in the Big Easy, Drew Brees was pretty much let go by the Chargers organization. So I'm going to give you a bit of a backstory of how everything led to Drew's departure from San Diego to give you a better understanding of what actually went down there and what caused Drew to ultimately end up with the Saints. In 2000, the then San Diego Chargers were the worst team in the league after going 1-15 in the regular season under quarterback Ryan Leaf. Leaf at the time was the organization's second overall pick in the 98 draft, but after poor play on the field, issues with his own character, teammates, and the media, the Chargers cut their losses and released the QB and signed 38-year-old quarterback Doug Flutie in March of 2001. Flutie at the time had also just been released by the Buffalo Bills in favor of their younger quarterback option, Rob Johnson. But at 38 years of age, the organization knew they had to look to the future. And at the 2001 NFL Draft, after trading their first overall pick to the Atlanta Falcons, the Chargers drafted LaDainian Tomlinson with the fifth overall pick and a quarterback from Purdue with the 32nd pick. With the signing of the former Bills QB and the drafting of Drew Brees, the intent was on Flutie becoming the number one quarterback heading into the 2001 season and with Brees learning the ropes from the veteran to eventually take over the starting position. That season, the Chargers, after initially going 3-0 to start the season, finished the campaign with a 9-game losing streak, ending their season with a 5-11 record. Doug Flutie started all 16 games, with Drew coming in in a Week 8 game against the Kansas City Chiefs to relieve the veteran after he suffered a concussion. The rookie QB ended up completing 15 of 27 passes for 221 yards along with a touchdown. And in the following offseason, with new head coach Marty Schottenheimer under the helm, the San Diego Chargers announced a change in the quarterback position with Drew Brees taking over the starting position over Doug Flutie. 2002 was a season with a lot of ups and downs as the youngster led his team to a 6-1 record after crucial division wins over the Chiefs and Raiders in weeks 6 and 7. During that 7 game span, Drew threw for 9 touchdowns against 6 interceptions and was assisted with the help of a solid run game with LT as he averaged 112 rushing yards during that stretch. But over the course of the last 9 games, the Chargers only squeaked out 2 wins and finished the 2002 campaign with an 8-8 record, missing the playoffs. Bree struggled a lot in the second half of that season as he finished those 9 games throwing 8 touchdown passes to 10 interceptions and even went a stretch of 4 straight games where he didn't complete a touchdown pass. The next season, the former Purdue quarterback kind of regressed and struggled a lot, and in no game would this be more evident than in the Week 3 matchup against the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens traveled to Qualcomm Stadium with a top-ranked defense that was led by the likes of Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and Terrell Suggs, so this was always going to be a certain test for the young QB. In this game, the Chargers quarterback struggled to get the offense going and found himself trailing 10-3 at the end of the second quarter. Things didn't get any better for the Chargers in the second half as Breeze threw three interceptions as San Diego lost 24-10 at home. The struggles would continue as the team lost four of their next five games with the last one coming at Soldier Field in Chicago. The Bears defeated the Chargers by a score of 20-7 with Drew completing 7-15 of 15 passes for 49 yards and an interception. And with that, Drew Breeze would soon be yanked in the second half in favor of backup Doug Flutie. By this time this season, Drew had thrown 7 TD passes to 12 interceptions, but this was a critical moment in Drew's career, especially because he was a young quarterback. Although he had a full season under his belt where he started all 16 games, the decision to bench a young franchise quarterback isn't something that's ever taken lightly as it could really affect their development and ultimately their confidence in the future. Man, you talk about tough, tough on the ego, tough on the confidence. For me, you know, that had never happened to me before. I'd never been benched, never even thought that that would 
would ever be a possibility, and yet that's reality. You know, that's life. You're not getting the job done. You know, you're 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 not going to play. Following this game, Schottenheimer made the decision to go the next five games with a veteran QB who recorded two wins, giving San Diego a three to ten record, heading into a Week 15 encounter against Brett Favre and the Green Bay Packers. The Friday before this game, the head coach announced that Breeze had regained his job as he would go on to say, It's not a reflection on Doug Flutie's performance. Drew needed an opportunity to step back and look at it from a different perspective. Now it's time to do that. Let's find out exactly what kind of progress he made. That being said, Marty did not give any reassurances that Drew would be the starter for the remainder of the season and that it was a week-to-week -week situation. San Diego finished the 2003 campaign with a 4-12 record for a four-way tie for last place with the Raiders, Cardinals, and Giants. And with the NFL tiebreaker rule favoring San Diego, the Chargers would receive the coveted number one pick in the 2004 NFL Draft. So at this point in Drew's three-year career, he started 27 games with a 10-17 overall record. During that time, he threw 29 touchdown passes against 31 interceptions while completing less than 60% of his passes with a rating just above 70. Ultimately, this was a far cry from the quarterback we now know today, but back in 2004, the Chargers front office weren't completely sold on the quarterback and wanted to bring someone else in to compete for the position. When Drew found out that his organization were going to draft another QB, he simply told him that would be the worst effing mistake this organization could ever make. I knew it right away. I mean, prior to the draft, Cam Cameron, our offensive coordinator, pulled me in his office. Brian Schottenheimer, my quarterback coach, pulled me in his office. Marty Schottenheimer pulled me in his office. And they said, listen, we believe in you, but we're telling you right now, they're going to draft somebody or they're going to bring somebody in to compete with you, to take your job. As the 2004 NFL draft approached, this was a draft that had three quarterback prospects in Eli Manning, Phillip Rivers, and Ben Roethlisberger. All three were touted to be solid picks for any team that was looking for a new QB under center. And as the story goes, we all know what happened in the 2004 NFL draft. The Chargers drafted Eli Manning with the first overall pick, the Giants drafted Phillip Rivers with the fourth pick, and then in an interesting turn of events, the two teams made a trade that would see both QB swap jerseys, with the Chargers also picking up three draft picks. And one of those picks later turned out to be linebacker Sean Merriman. So heading into the 2004 NFL season, the Chargers depth chart looked like this. Breeze was still the starter, with Flutie as the backup, and newly acquired first round pick Phillip Rivers would be the third string option but this was mainly due to the fact that he held out and missed part of training camp. That being said, San Diego got off to a 3-3 start. Breeze showed some improvement, but lacked a little bit of consistency. He struggled mightily in weeks 2 and 3 against the Jets and the Broncos, as he completed less than 50% of his passes and only threw for one touchdown pass along with two interceptions. However, in the remaining 10 games of the season, 9 of which where Breeze was the starter, the Chargers won 9 of their last 10, clinching the AFC West Division for the first time in 9 years with a 12-4 record. And in the final game of the season, with the Chargers already having locked up the division title, Marty Schottenheimer made an interesting decision to start veteran QB Doug Flutie over Phillip Rivers, the quarterback who was looking to gain some experience. Eventually, the rookie quarterback got a chance to get on the field in the second half, completing 5 of 8 passes along with a touchdown pass. You know, it's his first real action except for a couple of handoffs. It's a fumble. Rivers to Malcolm Floyd. Hey! Hey! Rivers throws a touchdown. Breeze finished the season passing for over 3,000 yards with 27 touchdown passes along with 7 interceptions and a passer rating of 104.8. This also marked the first time the Dallas-born QB made the Pro Bowl. Other notables that season were LaDainian Tomlinson and tight end Antonio Gates, who both received Pro Bowl nods. Head coach Marty Schottenheimer won Coach of the Year, and with that, things were looking much brighter in the organization's future as the Chargers were just a season ago the league's worst team with a 4-12 record to now division champs entering the playoffs. The wildcard round of the playoffs would see a rematch of the Week 2 encounter between the New York Jets and San Diego Chargers at Qualcomm Stadium. This was a close encounter that saw the visiting team pull away with a 10-point lead going into the fourth quarter. However, the Drew Brees led offense stormed back with an early field goal before tying the game with a one yard touchdown pass to Antonio Gates with only 11 seconds left in the fourth quarter. In overtime, the Chargers had a chance to take home the win after both teams punted on their first possession, but after a 40 yard field goal missed wide right by Nate Kading, the Jets stormed back on their next drive with a game winning field goal to send the Chargers crashing out of the playoffs. This was a pretty heartbreaking loss as instead of a young and vibrant 12-4 team, the media branded them as a team who couldn't beat the worst AFC playoff team in their own home. Following the 2004 season, Drew Brees became a free agent and was franchise tagged as his future in San Diego was still uncertain at this point. 
Now, the 2005 season is when things start to take a turn for the worst. Rivers moved up the depth chart to back up QB, while Drew Brees began to see a small decline in production from the year before as he finished the campaign recording 24 touchdowns and 15 interceptions with a passer rating of 89.2. The Chargers record fell to 9-7 for the year, with a former Purdue quarterback starting the first 15 games. And similar to the season before, but this time out of the playoff picture, the last home game versus the Broncos was a game that had no significance to either team. Many believe Marty would now give Rivers a shot to start, but in fact, that never happened. Instead, the coach continued to play Breeze in the final game of the season. So, what exactly was the motive to not start Rivers in the final game of the 04-05 season, with both games meaning absolutely nothing to the Chargers? Well, this had to do with a power struggle within the organization between head coach Marty Schottenheimer and GM AJ Smith. Smith at the time had became the Chargers GM in 2003 after previously serving a two-year stint as their director of player personnel and the issue was that he wasn't sold on Drew Brees even after having the two seasons he just had. He wasn't the GM that drafted Drew Brees so Drew wasn't the quarterback he wanted. Basically, Phillip Rivers was his guy because he took a shot and drafted a quarterback in the first round and eventually traded for Rivers. However, on the other side of the table, for Marty Schottenheimer, Drew Brees was his guy and the last thing he wanted was for the GM to insert his own QB into his lineup. In the end, these two simply could not get along with one another. And according to reports, the relationship began to sour in 2003 when Marty began making recommendations that year on personnel matters. Obviously, Smith didn't like the idea of the head coach meddling in on his business, so things began to snowball from there. And it also didn't help that Smith also had issues with people skills. He wasn't exactly known to communicate well with his own players. Even Rivers was asked years later about his quarterback battle with Drew Brees during the AJ Smith era and essentially said about his former GM that they purely had a working relationship with very little communication over their nine seasons. Anyways, the relationship between Marty and AJ got to the point in 2005 where they began working around one another and eventually stopped speaking with one another. He had issues with me, about me. I don't know, maybe it was because he didn't hire me. I didn't like the guy, it wasn't a very pleasant environment, but I was on one side of the building, he was on the other. AJ and I never talked. I went in and asked him to talk about something, he said, I don't want to talk about it. What the hell am I going to go back and talk to him again? Call it what you will, two alpha males in a pissy contest trying to exert their dominance over one another. And in the middle of all this power struggle were two quarterbacks who actually got on well with one another. Both were competitive guys that knew they were in a unique and uncomfortable situation. That being said, this move would change the futures of both quarterbacks as Drew Brees would suffer a horrific shoulder injury when he got sacked by John Lynch. After getting sacked, as he went down to recover the fumble football, the quarterback was crushed by Gerard Ward as he landed on top of Brees. Drew left the game in severe pain and could not even lower his right arm as he walked off to the sidelines. Phillip Rivers came in to finish out the rest of the game and with that, the San Diego Chargers now had a big issue on their hands. Drew Brees' injury in the last game of the season posed a huge problem for the quarterback. If Brees did not play in this game, he would have surely guaranteed himself a starting position and a long-term contract in San Diego or anywhere else. But instead, here he was with his career now in jeopardy mostly because of a spat between his head coach and GM. And I'm not putting the blame on Marty because hindsight is 20-20 and more often than not, Brees would have came out of that game unscathed. We've seen plenty of situations in the past where teams have already clinched the playoffs heading into the last game of the season and their quarterbacks leading their team out on the field. But now the organization and its quarterback had to wait on test results to examine the full extent of the damage on his right shoulder. While a few of the doctors gave Brees a slight chance of making a full recovery, the general consensus was that Brees wouldn't be able to overcome this injury. Basically, he was considered damaged goods, so with that being said, Chargers GM AJ Smith, with already paying Rivers practically starting QB salary and with the information he had on Drew Brees' injury, made the decision to offer Brees an incentive-based contract worth $50 million that only guaranteed him $2 million per season and was heavily based on performance incentives. The organization essentially didn't want to commit their future on Drew Brees entirely. So picture yourself in Drew's position. You have a bum shoulder which may or may not heal properly and it's questionable whether you'll ever fully recover. Your front office seems to lack faith in you and in your abilities but more importantly on your recovery from injury. They've offered you a contract that's purely incentive based. Your starting position at quarterback is in question especially with Philip Rivers waiting on the sidelines. So Drew did what any quarterback would have done in his position and met with other teams. The two teams that showed interest in the quarterback were the Miami Dolphins and the New Orleans Saints. However, the Dolphins were unsure if Drew would ever fully recover as their doctors suggested the team not sign Drew because of his shoulder injury. 
Instead, Miami traded for Vikings quarterback Dante Culpepper. So ultimately, Breeze ended up signing a six-year, $60 million deal with the Saints on March 14, 2006, and three seasons later, he led the Saints to their first ever Super Bowl title. Back in San Diego, the Chargers with Phillip Rivers under center had two terrific back-to-back -back teams after the departure of Drew Brees. In 2006, they led the NFL with a 14-2 regular season record, but would be knocked out by the New England Patriots 24-21 in the divisional round of the playoffs. In the following 07 season, the Chargers again won the AFC West with an 11-5 record and were able to dispatch the Tennessee Titans and Indianapolis Colts in the playoffs before seeing their Super Bowl run come to an end after losing the AFC Championship game to the Patriots. This was a tough pill to swallow as both Rivers and LT were injured and while they both played, LT left the field in the second quarter due to a bruised left knee. So all in all, the Drew brees Philip Rivers quarterback controversy in San Diego was fueled by their own respective head coach and GM as there was a power struggle within the organization. Brees' departure allowed Rivers to step in and lead the franchise and in the end, this all worked out well for both organizations. Although the Chargers didn't win the Super Bowl, they had a franchise quarterback who would lead them for over a decade. This is football, man. This is why we're out here. You guys stood tall. You reached down in the inner part of your gut and you did what had to be done. And I want to tell you something, guys. When you do that, there ain't nobody can ever take that away from you, because you did it. And I'm proud of you. Congratulations. The only thing that matters is that six inches between your backbone and your breastbone. Raise your eyes up. Right above is the next rung. Reach out and grab that rung. Pull yourself. Push your buddy. The next rung is today. Let's go.